All right, everybody, welcome to the morning routine. Happy Monday. It is Monday, September the 11th. Before we get into that, headlines. Got to do our headlines, and I've got really good aim. There's someone behind the camera. Hopefully, they're, you know, they've got the moves to block these things. Uh, all right, starting with Air Force One Autumn Gentleman is the must have sneaker of the season. That shoe looks like they raided my dad's old suit closet and built a shoe out of missing pieces of it or pieces of the suits. Yeah. Julie, I aimed, I almost got her. Almost close. Just a little to the left. I'll work on it. I got this. All right, moving right along. Fried potatoes are the special ingredient your grilled cheese is missing. I don't understand why people keep attacking my grilled cheese. It's not, oh, she's lucky, because that was, it was like on target, but took a hard right there. All right, moving right along. Slim Chew's review. Do Slim Chew apple cider vinegar gummies work for weight loss? It's a resounding no, because they taste so bad that when you're done, you need to go eat something good to like make yourself feel better, because who wants to eat a gummy that's apple cider vinegar? I mean, I get it. The apple cider vinegar thing is kind of a popular thing. Dang it. I know. I can, I can do it. Anyway, uh, yeah, slim, choose, whatever. All right, guys, moving along. It is September 11th. So we all know what happened on September 11th uh, many years ago. But it is a day that you should take a moment and think about it, remember it, and maybe take a moment of silence. We don't need to do that right at this moment, but... It is a very important day to remember. A lot of people lost their lives. It's a really big deal. And, uh, you know, we never want to see those things happen. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, just take a moment today and uh, think about it and uh, be thankful that, uh, you know, it wasn't as bad as it was. And uh, we came back as a country, as a people, uh, really strong after that. All right? Moving right along. I do not have anybody with me. That's weird. I wonder why. That's because I'm introducing someone new. Our new staff, Stephanie Wood, come on in. Yes, Stephanie Wood. She's been with us for three or four weeks now? Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. She's very excited to be here, I'm sure. Very much. We'll learn a little bit about her. And I, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that the most exciting thing that uh, is going on for her right now is the fact that we've started our fantasy football. Yes! <laughs> and it. I'm on the winning team. Oh yeah. That's right. Okay, here we go. So, as we've done before, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, my name's Stephanie. You all know that. Um, I'm a mother of three boys. Ooh. They are my trophies in life. Um, I've been working in this field, I want to say 25 years or so, give or take. Nice. And uh, ranging from kids that were 18 months old all the way up to adults that were 65 plus. So I've worked in classroom environments, I've worked in in-home environments, classroom, in-home, let's see, also vocational job skills. So it's a passion of mine, obviously. You know, you don't work in a job field for 25 years if you don't absolutely love it. Very but the way I got started in this line of work is my youngest son, Luke, he has autism. And he is just an exceptional human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a lot of services provided, you know, to us through an organization that help children in home therapy uh, get the services that they needed. And so he had that treatment like five days a week, six hours a day. So you really get to know the people, you know, that are working with your children. And I was just so thankful and so grateful that 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 we had that when we had it because. You know, 20 plus years ago, people weren't really, really familiar with autism. Even our pediatrician really wasn't familiar with autism. So we, I had to do a lot of self-educating and thank God for the organization that stepped in and provided us with every, all the treatment options that we received. And I just felt so, oblig not even an obligation, but I really wanted with all my heart to go ahead and give back to other parents and other organizations that serviced our population because this population, you people are absolutely amazing in every way, shape, and form. And every day when I come to work, there's not a one. If there's one, there's five of you that just put the biggest smile on my face. 
and they, you guys just make me feel important and appreciated. And who doesn't want to be important and appreciated, you know? Absolutely. So I just want to thank you guys. Thank you so much for being so welcoming. And uh, being here in this program is just incredible. It's a little bit different than what I've worked in previously. And I'll tell you what, the staff in this program, exceptional, primo. These people are, yeah. <laughs> So I'm really thankful and grateful to be here. And um, yeah. What a, yeah. Yeah. That was a lot. <laughs> I don't have any other questions. Just... Right on. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you want an educational course on how to tell me a little bit about yourself, that was it. <laughs> That's very nicely done. So pretty cool background. Uh, I find that you know most people in this field actually have some connection to it. It's rare to find anyone that doesn't have a sister, an aunt, a brother, a cousin, a nephew, yes. um, that they haven't had more than a, a decent amount of experience with them and their disability that drove them into the yes. field. Uh, I find that, you know, myself, I feel like the outsider still, even though I've been with the company for seven years, eight years, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I still feel like the outsider because I didn't. I didn't. I, I don't have any relatives with, uh, you know, autism. And that's or rare. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I fell into it mm -hmm. by doing consulting, and in that falling, I fell in love with it. Once I started hanging out and stuff, it just, you know, it, it's just an amazing uh, industry to be in. Uh, the folks, like you said. I've worked in a lot of businesses. You don't walk into them and get smiles instantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh. Uh, here we go, another day. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Sally. Hey, how's it going? Here we go. Yeah. You know, put your head down and get to the grind, right. you know? 100%. But here it's like good times, good vibes, always, you know, we got, you know, work to do and stuff, but, you know. So, uh, really cool story. Thank you. And thanks for sharing about the staff and Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Um, we work really hard on that. Um, I'm really just going through, I'm trying to qualify what else I could ask you because you did such a nice job. Uh, why the industry? We did that. Why the population? We got that. What do you think so far? We kind of got that. What do you want to get out of uh, now being here for a little bit? You might see some opportunity. Where, where do you think you want to grow? You've experienced a lot of things. What else do you want to do? What do you want to, what do you see here that you could grow into maybe? What do I want to grow into? I want to, I would say, be an a trusted uh, instructor, which means that I want my consumers to feel like they can come to me and talk to me and trust me with anything that might be going on with them. Mm -hmm. um, trust me with the fact that um, where it, when it comes to me, it stays with me. Mm -hmm. um, if they ever need assistance or anything like that, that I can be that trusted individual, you know, that they can come to. That's really important to me because a lot of us don't have that at home. Mm -hmm. We don't have that in our group homes. We don't even have that with our best friends. So I think it's really important as um, an instructor to be able to be that for someone, you know, be that trusted individual mm -hmm. that they can depend on. And I, I really hope to be that for, you know, all of you you know, especially my consumers. So that's really important to me. Got it. That's very good, very uh, noble and, um, you know, uh, I really like it. I was really kind of hoping for, I really want to do more with the morning routine. Oh, I'm totally down with that too. Apparently, totally. Apparently that's lower on your list. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm always ready to have fun. So anything I can do to incorporate a little bit of fun in my work day, I'm, yeah. That's, uh, that's I wanna, the I spirit to, right there. I need to come up with my own persona. For the morning routine. Oh, Ray already did that for you. Did he? Veronica Wood. That's her <laughs> stage name. Okay, we're not really officially releasing that yet. I know I just did, but <laughs> for the general population. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Stuff with an F. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We had a little uh, fun before with um, uh, Stephanie's name and uh, we found her stage name with Veronica Wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yep. uh, well, one last little oh, yeah. thing you might want to know about me, folks, is I'm a ranch girl, grew up all my life on a ranch, still on a ranch um, with boys. I'm actually the only girl in my family until my son, my middle son, Nick, just had two daughters. 
So <laughs> they're like few and far between. I mean, oh, they're priceless. You're like, but, I don't know what to do with these. I don't yeah. understand boys. <laughs> All boys. Even my this? son had sons. And the cousins had sons. So oh, these two little girls are precious. But the reason I'm well mentioning this, too. oh yes, <laughs> many boys have been. is because I love anything outdoors. So that includes fishing, camping, hunting, but football, Ooh. sports. Yeah, see right? actually it was on her resume and that's why we hired, uh, hired. Very that's passionate good. about it. Oh, nice. So yeah, so that other team of ours, you know, the uh, football thing we got going on, you guys are in some big trouble we're gonna throw the word the what's that called are we on the same team yeah oh sweet you and i are on the same team <laughs> i'm not sure it's getting a little worried there for a second the <laughs> world hurt on the rest of you there we go that's where i was going with so that. now the big question then you're a big sports fan you're a big football fan how do you really feel about baseball i love baseball go giants well yeah we were, we were close we were close mm -hmm. it's halfway there. baseball fan i really don't watch a lot of golf um well, who does <laughs> I love to play golf, but I can't watch yeah, that crap. It's like, how do you watch? How do you sit and watch that? See, that's the way I feel about baseball. That's what people say. About baseball? But there's so much, like, the sport, you know, there's so much, what I want to say, what's the word I want to use? There's a lot that goes into, people just think you just get up there and hit the bat or hit the ball and whatever, run the bases, but there's a lot behind there. There's a lot going on. You know, the catcher calls the whole entire game. So, you know, if you're really get into it it kind of gets exciting you know it's so slow <laughs> and so boring it's like watching golf but it is very technical that's kind yes, of the problem that's with it. the word i was I going have, for technical. i have respect for uh most sports including baseball for the fact that there is a lot that goes into it it's just not fun to watch <laughs> i don't mind going to a game i tell you yeah, yeah, yeah. i can go to a baseball game and sit in the stands and eat popcorn and right. peanuts and enjoy myself and yeah it's cool there's a game going on mm -hmm. on tv it doesn't belong yeah okay. life sports are a whole nother level yes absolutely. absolutely yeah i think so all right very good well we're super happy to have you thank you for coming aboard you bet i'm so happy to be here yeah and uh, we'll see lots of her around we'll get her back on the morning routine again and saw in some of the lives uh, lots of other activities but we do have to move on because uh, otherwise i'll get yelled at for rambling on for too long so what's coming up next do you know yet no okay here we go it's uh i think we got uh josh with a positive quote i think he's back doing the positive quotes let's check nice. out josh right here Hello everybody, Joshua Asbill with the positive quote. Today's positive quote, the biggest lesson I've learned is, it is okay. It's okay for me to be kind to myself. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to get mad. It's okay to be flawed. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to move on. All right, good, good job, Josh. Good. Thank you very much for that. Moving right along, we have the National Day with Gabrielle. Oh, go, Gabby. Good morning, everybody. Here we are. The second week of September. Just chugging along. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I did. It was my grandson's birthday, and it was Buzz Lightyear thing. Woohoo! To infinity and beyond, you know. But uh, then you have to come to a Monday. And the weather's getting nice, so we're kind of falling into fall almost. Yeah, I think so. But, okay, so for the national day. The national day is, I think I've talked about this before and I think everybody should do it. Today's national day is national. Make your bed day. Make your bed. Just, you know what? My husband tells some of his employees, the best thing you can do for yourself, at least you'll make sure you've accomplished one thing in the day is make your bed. 
Start the day off right and make your bed. At least if the day goes crappy, at least you know you've done one thing, right? You've accomplished one thing. You made the bed before you left the house. Maybe it can help you throughout the day too. You've accomplished something, let's accomplish another thing. I think that's the thing he's trying to get through to his employees. But if I don't make the bed, my husband does make the bed. There's a few things that he does do. At night, he washes the dishes and morning helps make the bed. Guess what more could I want, huh? Well, we won't go there, but you know, make your bed. It's so nice to come home and crawl into a bed that's been made at night versus trying to pull the sheets up and tuck things back in because if you're a wacko sleeper, you know, my husband, he sleeps and the covers are everywhere. I'm always pulling on them. And he says, it's not me, it's you. And I go, oh no, because when you're not here, I can just get up out of bed and pull the cover over. I, I don't move when I sleep. I'm like a mummy or something, I guess. I just stay put in one spot. And I just have to get up and, ooh, it's easy, mate. Tuck it in, fluff the pillows, and I'm good to go. Him? No. My daughter, she's a wacko sleeper, too. Are you a wacko sleeper? Is that why you don't make your bed in the morning? Because the sheets are everywhere. Pillows on the floor, blankets over here. I know you kind of sleepers, but then that is really why you would want to make your bed, right? Because you got to pick everything up anyway at night. Why don't you just get it done in the morning? Besides then your mom or somebody doesn't have to walk by the door and shut it because they don't want to look at your bed. Get something accomplished first of the day. Everybody make your bed on National Make Your Bed Day. She does the back in the past, or is it Zach? Why? Oh, she's taking over. Zach. He's Zach, I'm coming for you. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's coming for the back in the past with Veronica Wood. Yeah, Wait, Veronica Wood. <laughs> that was good. She got me on that one. I didn't pay attention. All right, back in the past with Zach right here. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Monday. I hope you guys are all having a, uh, I hope you all had a great weekend, number one. Uh, I hope the start to the day has been wonderful. Uh, and so let's get to it. Let's go, let's go back, back in the bearded past with Zach. Zach. And, and, you know, you know before paved roads, uh, you know, in anywhere in the United States or the world in general, they were dirt, right? Sometimes cobblestone, things like that. But most roads were just plain dirt. And... Anyone who lives here in the valley, I mean, come on, man. It's dusty come summertime, right? I mean, it's dusty. Even with paved roads, it's dusty. So, when you wanted to travel on Newman in 1910, you didn't find paved roads. But the streets in many town at the time, and here's a picture of a gentleman in Newman. What they would do is they would go down the roads and they would spray the roads down and kind of wet them down so the dust wasn't so bad so uh yeah pretty interesting there i mean considering uh i mean it's just i don't know it's a good idea i, I wish they would still do that now even on our paved roads but uh, no uh, so this lasted until around 1921 um by then most streets had been pra uh, paved but this picture is like i said uh 1909 and it's wagon uh drawn and that's a uh he's that's what he's doing that's his job water now on the roads all right guys take care and uh, have a good one all right bye now all right that is it for the morning routine, thank you again, Stephanie Wood yes. with F, and uh, one o'clock YouTube Live, where not really sure what'll happen, but something cool will always happen as it does, and then we're off to the day, making it a great Monday. Thank you again for coming in, sticking around, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow, Tuesday, on the morning routine. Take care, everybody.